everybody. Tudo bem, tudo bem. Tudo bem, the hair looks good. The hair looks amazing, as usual. <laughs> as usual. So, we are, Guga, we are very, very happy to have um, some huge tennis slash Guga fans with us here today. And um, we're just going to let them ask you the questions because they're going to do the, they're going to do the work. Uh, right. And we're, we're going to start with um, someone who is in the United States of America. She is in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Her name is Kira. Kira, the floor is yours. Okay. All right. Hello. Hello, Kira. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Very well. Uh, my question for you was, I'm 14 years old, so I was wondering what your best advice is for a young tennis player. Do you play a professional level? Uh, or, um, no, I High school? Not. Yes. Okay. I try to, to uh, answer on the different circumstances. I believe the, 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 main, the main advice would be to have a great relation with the, any sport and especially with tennis. The daily basis to maintain your motivation, uh, the, the crucial thing is to, to have a good flavor once you're there. Sometimes, and uh, if you go for, to the profession, it's very hard. You need to be pushed and uh, you need to, to go <sighs> suffering for, to become a better player. So it, once you have this good relation and you understand tennis, it's a part of your life. It's uh, something that contributes to, to you as in a general, to, to, be a, to become a better human being as, as a, a, a tennis player. You already set up to, to go forward, you know, to, to go next day and try again. Because we, uh, we live in, in a sport that you, you have many frustration on the tennis court. You go there, you hit the ball very nice. And then the next one, oh, my God, I can't hit. I, I can't put it on the court again. What's happening? So your mind starts to, to trick you down. And once you have uh, already the conviction that it's part of, of the game, assurance is that things are going to be all right. doesn't matter. I win, I lose. It doesn't matter. Daily, I will understand that this is what, it, what it, I need. This is what it takes. And uh, so that's how, uh, why I'm here, to have this flavor. In your age, it's very hard to to stop by and think about this and that you want to experience you want to live you know you will go there oh, okay i want to quick i want to go and, and play don't don't stop by and think too much so it's part of uh, of the process i think it, that's the way it should be if, if you find a routine that makes things more simple more beauty and uh, more tasty that's uh, how I think tennis will continue you, we, uh, in your life for, for longer. Thank you. Let's take a plane, a virtual plane from Allentown to Rome. Uh, we are going to Rome and Joseph, who is in Rome, you can see. Joseph, go ahead. Luca, how are you? Hello, Joseph. Italia, va bene? How, how are you? Very good, and yourself? Well, I would like to know how can I improve my forehand when playing on clay courts? Because the ball it hasn't hasn't got very pace on it, so you got to put pace on it, and that's really harder than on grass court on, or on every hard court you got out there. Right? You mean uh, more on the clay court or all surface? No, no, clay court specifically. Okay. Have you tried the one that I used to do it? Uh, not quite. I'm, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm uh, just a, a very silent guy. <laughs> okay. When playing, the the, the uh, key is about the legs, my friend. If you look up at Rafa's forehand, and if you if you uh, look at the how he push from his tooth, tooth, the feet, and explode to to the hand, that's how you generate uh, power. It's about this uh, movement, you know, going... To take then, energy from the, from the ground. From the ground. From the ground. Right. Of course, right, if you right. hit the ball uh, with uh, longer, you know, more distance to your body, it's better. You have a, a larger uh, touch, a larger uh, way of 
of contact, so give you more more power in the end. But uh, to have the control and the power, the legs normally guys think about the much more about the hands because it's the last ta- part of the body to contact the the ball. But the power and uh, to have this this intensity on the on the forehand, it's all up about the the legs. So you have to go. Uh, back on the court, work hard and on your on your movements and uh, uh, physical, also physical condition to to uh, get this balance. You know, going down on the legs and then push hard and take uh, energy from the ground. And so we go from Rome. We go right back to Brazil, and we are with Fernando. Fernando, go for it. Hey, Google, nice to meet you. Fernando, beleza? What's up? Beleza, rapaz. So I always wanted to ask you, who was the toughest guy that you ever played in Juan Garros and why? Hey, a straight uh, question. Eugenie Kafelnikov. Oh, it was <laughs> like a, a giant in the beginning, you know? It's, uh, uh, first... Um, uh, a first match that I, I had on 97 against him, I couldn't convince myself that I, I would have a chance to win. He was so much better than, than me. And uh, this uh, scareness, I never felt on the, on the tennis court before. And uh, was, of course, the, the first time I faced uh, this uh, stage on, on the tournament on... on Early age, everything uh, came up too fast on '97. So uh, was the only time in my career that uh, I couldn't believe that I had a 0.001% chance on winning. Somehow during the match, I end up discovering uh, a light. You know, you see a light there. You say, "Oh, come on, it's possible. Uh, he's human. <laughs> we, we we can have a chance." And we end up winning. But still, next two times, I faced him on 2000 and 2001. I needed to play my best tennis. Uh, I had to go beyond and saving once two sets to one down, four one down. And uh, almost uh, with the back back uh, on the wall and the one centimeter, one shot would be over. And then uh, on the third time, Perhaps the best uh, match I played on the on the French Open that I could win finally on four sets. So to play my best tennis, <laughs> it, it takes four sets and two and a half hours, three hours to beat him. And all the time that I beat him on the quarterfinal, it feels like I'm going to win the tournament. It gave me the same <laughs> the same taste and the same uh, confidence to to move up and go for the trophy. So then it's easy for me to say that he was the, the toughest one for me to even uh, look at the field, you know, I said, oh, Café Unicom again. It, and Larry <laughs> used to say it took him uh, many hours of, uh, of sleep. <laughs> well, once we have to play him. In the tournament, we used to catch up and uh, he knows very well this already. So now we, we can tell open it, <laughs> the fear. <laughs> We had to face him. Okay, so we we'll, let's change continents again, Muga, and we'll go to India. We have Gauri, and she's in Delhi, uh, and she is used to being with us on these uh, Zooms. So she's used to speaking to all these stars. Uh, she spoke to Simona Halep. She didn't bring her the best of luck because we know that Simona, unfortunately, is not playing the tournament. Let's hope she brings you a bit more luck. Gauri, it's all you. Hi, Guga. It's... It's such an honor. Um, I think I Thank just you. want to ask you. Um, you, it's been twenty years since you last won Roland Garros, and so I wanted to uh, know what are your most cherished memories from the times you won this tournament. No, oh, thank you, Gauri. I, I was just just before I come up here. I was chatting with the India Television. It was very nice. So it's a pleasure to to come up. So many yeah. places that I never been, and somehow we have a relation. I remember yeah. uh, the the special taste is all about the emotions. And this third title, I had uh, a precise and uh, 
uh, writing moments that came up to me on the fourth round, not even in the most important matches. Once I, I was able to save match point and turn around a, a match against Michael Russell, I was about to go into to the to my chair after uh, just a, a talk to him, I finished the match. I was going to my to my chair and came up what I could do to thank be thank the people that were there to share with the people who was surrounding me that gave me a, a emotion, a, a experience that until today I can feel. It's too big, you know, it's huge, uh, Gary. It's, it's magical. How can I be thankful enough for them? And it came up for me like this, too. In a second, I, I understand what I need to do. It's the heart. I draw the heart and I lay down because I was exhausted. But at the same time, I was floating, you know, once you are oh, uh, 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 beyond this world. And I, I feel... I, I felt myself uh, at the court, at home, at people's arms, uh, uh, on surrounding of uh, love, passion, uh, happiness. So this is impossible to to beat. This is the the most you can feel, the most you can remember. And uh, just just to be sure, once I win the tournament, I I end up doing again for the people who wasn't there that day or either to, to make it clear that they made me win the tournament. Wasn't myself isolated and uh, only my own. No, the other way around. They carry me to, and they raise me up to the, from the floor and, and say, Guga, come on, go ahead. You're going to win. So that's why I, I was able and uh, I wanted to do it again to make clear how important and, and uh, how massive this moment it is to me until, until this day. Thank you, Guga. Thank you. All right, Gary. See you soon in the chat. Eh? You, know, you are here all the time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to tag you on social media. Okay. You know that we spoke with uh, Stefano Tsitsipas before the tournament began. Um, and personally, I had spoken to him last year and he had told me that he would like you to coach him, but unfortunately that never happened. And now- But I give you already, I, I already give him the, my secret and the shampoo. I gave him to the, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps bring, bring, bring luck to him. Huh? To, the other time we made this joke with uh, Novak and we, we got together with the peruca. What was the name with the- with a, with you know, the, um, the, the yeah. hair, I said that the yeah. problem is yeah. in the hair that he put on the this peruca we call in Brazil and he ended up winning and drawing the heart. So with the shampoo, I will give the, the touch now to, to Tsitsipas. Let's see what happened. But but somebody, a, a fan, a fan, a Brazilian fan asked Stefanos if he wins the tournament here in Roland Garros, will he draw a heart and lie down in it? And he said 100% he's going to do it because he likes you so much and it's the 20th anniversary of your win. So if Stefanos Tsitsipas wins, I'm telling you, this is a scoop. He's going to draw the heart on the court and lie down in it. Ah, um, come on, let's see. Now I have my favorite player now <laughs> to, <laughs> to go for together with Thiago Monteiro. I have, no, one more Brazilian to, to cheer. You need to, coach him. You need to ah. coach him, Guga. He wants you to coach him. As the same way he wanted... I wanted to, but uh, I have uh, uh, two, uh, two, not tennis players, but two human beings to coach it. You know, one is seven years old and the other eight and a half. He, he born in the day of the final French Open, back on the time, uh, eight years ago. That's so this, I have, I still connect with tennis. I still coach. I told the... Uh, Stefanos, I would love to, but I can't, man. Not now. Perhaps in the future. And said, okay, let's see. <laughs> okay, let's finish this transmission. We have a, a young lady who is very, I think, excited to speak to you. Um, she also is in Brazil. Her name is Bella. Uh, and I think, Bella, turn on your microphone and go for it. Hey. 
Oi, Bela! Hello. Oi, tudo bem? <risos> tudo! Tá, tá nervosa? Are you nervous? Uh, no, I'm ok. Ok. Because I love to talk, so... Ah, so, my name nice. is Bela. I am 11 years old. I am in Escola Guga, learn tennis here. I can see, ok. Today, my question for you is... Did you imagine that you would be an inspiration for Brazilian children like me to play tennis? Well, thanks, Bella. Uh, I never imagined this from the beginning, but uh, it's uh, the circumstances of, of the life that uh, bring us here connected to the Roland Garros. And once I step up the first time, I was 15 years old in Roland Garros, and I watched it. Oh, people playing the big courts, packets, you know, full of uh, ah, intensity, energy. I understand why it was tennis. And I said, this is what I want to my life. I didn't already know that I could uh, touch and influence so many kids, so many people around the world. But I understand this energy, this magical. Uh, I need to, to touch. I need to be part of. So somehow... I came up, uh, developed a great career, and it, it all uh, raised and explode in the French Open on 97. And I start to go deep and, and see how we can move the, the world. You, you can go beyond every screen, every, everywhere in the world wild and, and, and bring a happiness to people. So this was the most exciting and the best uh, gift It came together with the career. I didn't know I, I would have this experience and this opportunity. And right now, I'm sure this was the, the most uh, beautiful achievement for my career. So ev every time I was there, and imagine uh, raising the trophy in Roland Garros and all Brazil, people are around the street celebrating. I imagine in many countries as well, uh, they, they look at, at us and say, oh, Google, oh, very nice. He, he won in 97. It's impossible for me to still uh, understand how it was because 14 days before, ah, go, okay, let's go there and win one, one match is more than enough. And somehow, 14 days later, we were in the final against Sergi Bruguera and, and ah, we won French Open champion, the people in the street uh, at the all around the the country is celebrating like a World Cup. So come on. For me, also, as well, was a surprise. But was a great surprise. Was the best surprise I could receive in my life. And also, just to finish up, I would never dream about and I never could uh, understand that we could build a school of tennis. And uh, on these days, being still being very close to many Brazilians giving the same... Uh, experience the same opportunities and especially the same hopes for kids, for youngs, and for everybody around our country. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Okay, right. Bella, thanks. <laughs> I can see this. For every, everybody in the, in the school there. Yeah. Guga, thank you. First of all, well, thank you everybody for joining, having joined and making this, um, this little virtual meeting possible and very nice. Guga, thank you for uh, being available and answering, taking the time to answer your fans. Congratulations again for the 20th anniversary. 20 uh, years, man, you. 20 years ago. It doesn't make us you younger see? at all. You know that, right? Uh, but it's okay, we are here. That's a good sign. It's if you're getting time. old, that's a good sign. And uh, count on me if you need me next week and any time. This is very pleasure to to talk to the people, be connected with them. So just give a call for us here. I get myself prepared. I put you know, my comb here. And then they it's, the, it's the wig, the wig. You can take the wig. The wig. Yeah. Yes, the wig. But, But now, on these days, I'm, uh, uh, I'm very lucky because it doesn't matter too much. Uh, getting old, I put a Lacoste shirt. I'm beautiful. <laughs> we, are, we are all ready. We are setting down. Okay. Ciao, Guga. Goodbye, everybody. Ciao. Anytime. Good morning. You need me. Hi. Let me know. Bye bye. I love it. Thank bye you. Guys. Okay. Wait, bye one more bye second. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Wait, we have to do a, a postcard. Everybody for three okay. seconds. Make a funny face. One, two, three. One. Ah.
Two, three. Yeah.